Happy Pride, everybody. Hello and welcome. My name is Jonathan Lucero McKinney, and in honor of Pride Month and as part of the LGBTQA community, today I'd like to talk to you about HIV. It is an infection that has plagued the past and the current times of our community, but there are steps to take to prevent your risk of getting HIV. It's in the form of pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP. Now, you've probably heard about it before, but did you know that there are now two available drugs to take for PrEP? Yes, there are. Truvada and Descovy. These drugs are about 99% effective in some studies of preventing HIV when you take them routinely. Now, what do we know about the two drugs? What's the similarities and what's the differences? The pharmaceutical company Gilead has recently released results on their clinical trial called Discover. It looked at 5,500 individuals taking tr either Truvada or Descovy and compared them side by side. And we gained a lot of information as to what are the benefits and what are the risks of each drug. So let's talk about it. Now to summarize the CDC's recommendations of who should be taking PrEP, it's basically anyone who has more than one sexual partner of any gender, of any sexuality, or if they use IV drugs. They also cite some high risk groups such as gay men or men who have sex with men. Okay, so first off, what are the similarities? To start, Truvada and Descovy should only be taken in people who are currently HIV negative. Your provider will test you to make sure that you are HIV negative before they start this drug. Of note, it's important to tell them of recent sexual exposures or if you felt fever or fatigue in the past week or so. Sometimes these initial HIV screenings can miss the virus altogether. So it's important to disclose that with your healthcare provider. The other thing to know is that both medications are taken daily. You need to adhere to them on a daily basis. Also, every three months, you'll be retested for HIV and screened for other sexually transmitted infections. Now, from what we've seen with the DISCOVER trial is that people are at very high risk of getting sexually transmitted infections despite being on pre-exposure prophylaxis. I'm talking about gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis. These things are still high risk as people are neglecting to use other safe sex practice like condoms in lieu of just using Truvada or Descovy. So it's important to always combine those safe sex practices with each other. Both medications will also require your provider to get some baseline blood levels of your kidney function. All right, so what are the differences? What are you telling me here? So Descovy's pill is a little bit smaller, so those who have trouble taking pills by mouth may benefit from Descovy just for that reason. Um, however, there is something about Truvada's dosing that has not been studied in Descovy, and it's called on-demand dosing or 2-1-1 dosing. Essentially, what you'll do is you will take two pills, two Truvadas, uh, two to 24 hours before sexual activity. Then you'll take one pill 24 hours after sexual activity, and then another one 24 hours later, two, one, one. It should also be noted that if you continue having sex, that you have to follow up with two sexless days of taking this medication. Now, this on-demand dosing has not been studied in Descovy, so it's only indicated at this time for Truvada. And in fact, it's been shown to have an 86% reduction in the risk of getting HIV. Another major difference between the two medications is that Descovy is currently not indicated for those who are at risk of HIV through vaginal intercourse. Further studies are ongoing to see if those with a vagina will be covered with Descovy. Yet another difference is that Descovy has shown to be better for the kidneys. Measurements of kidney function showed better in this Discover trial. Also, measures of bone health and bone density have shown to be better in Descovy. Now, these are two things that Truvada has long been ridiculed for. It's ability to impair the kidneys and the bones, the bones, the bones. Okay, what else? So Truvada has also shown that there is less weight gain compared to Descovy. About two and a half pounds less weight gain for Truvada than Descovy. And in those taking Truvada, their cholesterol levels did not raise as much as it did for the Descovy group. All right, so what does all this mean? What does it boil down to? It looks like the study shows that the SCOBY is better for your kidneys and for your bones, but Truvada has less weight gain and is better for cholesterol. The good news is that both of them are equally effective in preventing HIV. So for people who are looking for a prep option, should you jump right to Descovy or should you switch from Truvada to Descovy? What's the recommendation here? To answer that question, I'd like to refer to the paper by the Annals of Internal Medicine. 
It states that the modest reduction in adverse effects that are associated with Descovy are not worth the premium price tag, and those currently taking Truvada should still stay on Truvada, unless otherwise indicated. Right now, the research suggests that those who have trouble taking larger pills would benefit from Descovy, those with baseline lower levels of kidney function would also benefit from Descovy, or if you're at risk for a bone mineral density problem, Descovy might be the medication for you. Now, medical insurance or a price or anything like that might be an influencer for you in choosing a medication. Both of them cost several thousand dollars a month to maintain the prescription, but there are plenty of federal programs and coupons offered by Gilead that can help significantly cut those costs, if not providing them for free. And it's important to know that Truvada, the formulation that makes up Truvada, is scheduled to go generic in September of 2020, which should cut the cost of this medication significantly. Now, if you wanna read more about pre-exposure prophylaxis or HIV prevention, I'm gonna put some links in the description below, as well as a link to an article I wrote for Options Magazine about this topic. I'm so upset that there will be no Pride Fest this year as a result of this pandemic, but I guess it could be worse. And it gives me an excuse to show even more pride the rest of the year. All right, thanks again. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, and I hope to see you next time. Love you, see you, bye.